has long fascinated us, and scientists have found evidence of ancient humans using the moon as a calendar. Various ancient civilizations studied celestial events, and many of these were detailed long before the first written language. This fascination continued into the modern day, and thanks to advancements we have a better understanding of the moon, its cycles and things like lunar eclipses. On Monday the 16th of April, Earth's orbit was positioned directly between the sun and the moon, and although it didn't stay in that position for very long, in that short time period the moon slowly faded into a super blood moon. As reported by various scientific websites, the lunar eclipse coincided with a separate event, known as a supermoon. It gets this name due to the moon being at its closest point to Earth. This super blood moon is one of the most impressive celestial events that one can witness, mainly because you don't need any specific equipment to be able to see it. Interestingly though, during this event many people noticed what they described were strange objects close to the moon, describing them as looking like a line of glowing lights. Unlike most strange sightings, this event wasn't just reported by a single person. Multiple people came forward on social media sharing the images, with some saying that they could see large lights close to the moon, while others described upwards of three or more lights. People started to comment on the strange objects via social media, asking whether anyone else had seen the lines. Most of the people who'd seen them noted that you couldn't really see them without a telescope, with one amateur astronomer saying that you could clearly see them when you zoomed in. One user said the following, I don't want to speculate about what these things were, I just want to know if anyone else saw them. I've been hearing different things from people who watched the event, and the thing I found odd was that you couldn't really see them with just your eyesight. I needed the aid of a telescope in order to see them. This tells me that these objects were really high up, and couldn't have been something like a balloon. Also, whatever these things were, they stayed in a tight formation for the entire duration that they was up there, something you don't often see with objects like satellites as although they move slowly they don't just hover motionless. I'm interested to see if anyone else saw these things and what they make of them. End quote. Various theories have been put forward to explain these types of sightings. Some believe they're caused by some type of atmospheric phenomena, giving off the illusion that these are lights that hold their position in the sky, while others think they could be reflections among other things. However, not everyone buys into these explanations, and have said that they could clearly see that various lights were hovering close to the moon. Interestingly, this isn't the first time that strange objects have been detected close to a blood moon, and it's led some to think that this could be a physical object instead of something like atmospheric phenomena. Strange atmospheric lights which have been described as looking like large objects isn't anything new. In fact, one of the oldest accounts of strange objects being reported in our sky comes from the 1500s. During the 1500s, as populations began to grow across the world to a number of more than half a billion people, there was a sudden surge of impossible to explain objects sighted in mass clusters over highly populated cities that seemed to have engaged in what can only be described as aerial combat. Back in 1561, the city of Nuremberg, Germany was one of the most popular, bustling and lively cities across the entirety of Europe, being the second most populated German city during the 16th century. Interestingly enough, due to its massive population, it would become the location of one of the largest mass sightings witnessed in history. According to surviving newspaper documents, the event occurred during the early morning of the 14th of April back in 1561 at approximately 4am to 5am. As the sun was rising, the citizens of Nuremberg began to notice that the sun was blotted out by two blood-red circles that hovered over the city. The witness accounts detailed that the red half-circles emitted their own lights that lit up the sky in a dark red light, showing that the half-circles were most likely some form of red spotlight. 
Additionally, artistic recreations of the scene detailed crescent-shaped, ball-like triangular and cone-shaped objects appearing in the sky and engaging in a fiery battle, resulting in many of the craft falling to the ground in a puff of smoke and debris. The newspaper details the event in the following statement. In the morning of April 14, 1561, at daybreak, between 4 and 5 a.m., a dreadful apparition occurred on the sun, and this was seen in Nuremberg in the city, before the gates and the country by many men and women. At first there appeared in the middle of the sun two blood-red semicircle arcs, just like the moon in its last quarter, and in the sun above and below and on both sides the colour was blood. There stood a round ball of partly dull, partly black ferrous colour, Likewise, there stood on both sides a torus about the sun such as blood red ones and other balls in large numbers, about three in a line or four in a square, or so some alone. In between these globes there were visible a few blood red crosses, between which there were blood red stripes, becoming thicker to the rear and at the front malleable like the rods of reed grass, which were intermingled, among them two big rods, one to the right and one to the left, and within the small and big rods there were three or so four or more globes. These all started to fight among themselves, so that the globes which were first in the sun flew out to the one standing on both sides. Therefore the globes standing on the outside of the sun in the small and large rods flew into the sun. Besides, the globes flew back and forth among themselves and fought vehemently with each other for over an hour and when the conflict in and again out of the sun was more intense, they all became fatigued to such an extent that they all, as said above, fell from the sky down upon the earth, as if they all burned and then wasted away on the earth with immense smoke. After all this, there was something like a black sphere, very long and thick-sighted. The shaft pointed to the east, the point pointed west. End quote. So what exactly was encountered that day? Could this have been some type of battle that occurred over one of the most populated German cities at the time? Were humans under threat of an advanced race only to be protected by another? What could the red light have represented? And after the crashing of the craft, where did the debris land and why was it never recovered? Interestingly, this would not be the only isolated instance of such a strange celestial phenomenon. Just like the celestial phenomenon that occurred in 1561, a little more than five years later and a few hundred miles away, the city of Basel, Switzerland would also prove to be a mass sighting location for an aerial battle that appeared to be focused around another massively populated region. However, unlike the battle that took place over Nuremberg, Germany, the Basel celestial event saw three separate events that took place over the course of three days before ending completely in a dramatic aerial battle over the city. The first mass sighting began on the 27th of July back in 1566, at around 9pm. The newspapers described that the sun appeared to have lost all its radiance, suddenly becoming incredibly dim like the moon. Shortly after this, a dark red light began to appear from the sun that lit up the sky with a darkness behind the lights that blocked out the sun. A description similar to a massive dark craft with red lights radiating from a single middle point. After the sun had set, however, the light and craft seemed to have disappeared. At the dawn of the next day when the sun began to rise at around 6 in the morning, the people of the town remarked again that the sun's light had been dimmed and replaced with a dark red glowing light that lit up the entire city. This continued for the entire day before disappearing. The following day, no strange event occurred. Unfortunately, almost two weeks later following this event, on the 7th of August, the town exploded into chaos, as hundreds of crafts described as large black spheres began flying around at tremendous speeds, shooting out what was described as an invisible fire that caused money to burn up and crash into the ground. The newspaper recounted all three events as follows. It happened in 1566 three times, on the 27th and 28th of July, and on August 7th against the sunrise and sunset, 
we saw strange shapes in the sky above Basel. During the year 1566 on the 27th of July, after the sun had shone warmth from the clear bright skies, and then around 9pm it suddenly took a different shape and colour. First the sun lost all its radiance and luster, and it was no bigger than the full moon, and it finally seemed to weep tears of blood and the air behind him went dark, and he was seen by all the people of the city and countryside. In much the same way as the moon, which has already been almost full and has shone through the night, assuming an almost blood red colour in the sky. The next day Sunday the sun rose at about 6 o'clock, and slept with the same appearance it had when it was lying before. He lit the houses, streets and around us as if everything was blood red and fiery. At the dawn of August 7th, we saw large black spheres coming and going with great speeds and precipitation before the sun, and chattering as if they led a fight. Many of them were fiery red and soon crumbled and then extinguished. End quote. Could the first large craft have been a collection of small black spheres attempting to conduct a massive experiment on the population below, by blocking out the sun potentially causing crops to perish from the lack of sunlight? Or could the craft have tried to have warned people as to the impending battle to try and scare them away from the city, with the red light acting as a warning light for a battle soon to occur? Considering the fact that the red light circular craft was also used before the battle that occurred over Nuremberg, it very well could have been an attempt at communicating an impending battle. The human's red could help represent universal dangers, such as a burning fire, which is a common comparison that witnesses of the event made, describing the lights in the craft looking to be blood red in colour. Additionally, the newspaper of the Basel of Switzerland Celestial Phenomena detailed that although the craft would crash, falling out of the sky they would burst into a massive puff of smoke and burn away in a fiery blaze. This could help explain why there was no recovered objects from the aerial battles, as they were burned up completely before they struck the ground to be retrieved. But why was there a mass fight to begin with? The fact that the battles took place over some of the most heavily populated areas on the planet should also be used as contextual information surrounding the event. Given the fact that the objects were all varied in size, colour and design, this could help to prove that the entities battling in the sky were of different origins, and fighting on opposite sides. Does this mean then that a group of these objects were about to attack heavily populated human cities? but were stopped by a separate group of objects that helped to protect human life from an oncoming attack. Interestingly enough, both articles described the attack as being a religious event, with some craft described as looking like the Christian cross, and that the enemies of the human beings were being stopped by the power of God. Are these events proof that people were witnessing something highly advanced, and due to their lack of knowledge and what was taught at the time, their minds immediately went to this being a religious event. Although these events are the most well documented, and well known celestial phenomena that seemed eerily similar to descriptions of an advanced dogfight, countless more events that held similar descriptions were made across many different cities throughout the 1500s. As far as humanity is aware, the entire planet could have been at the centre of a massive invasion that was only prevented by another group of protective objects that wanted to give humanity a chance of one day becoming a space-faring species. So what do you make of these interesting stories? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.